Hello, my name is Matt Donlinger, and welcome to this Unity Gaming Services Bootcamp where we will cover our use cases demo. This sample package contains a collection of use cases designed to show how to implement typical backend game use cases and game design elements, show how to resolve specific development tasks, and highlight the efficiency you can achieve in your game backend by integrating different UGS packages in your project. Before we begin, I want to briefly introduce myself. My name is Matt Dondelinger, and I am a developer advocate with Unity focusing on monetization and player engagement. Prior to coming to Unity, I spent the past 14 years in the video game industry, focusing mainly on monetization. I have worked on titles such as Fallout 76 and Star Wars The Old Republic. Now that I have introduced myself, let's get started. The use case sample project we will be showing in this bootcamp is a collection of use cases that show common live game design elements and how to resolve them using Unity and Unity Gaming Services. These samples highlight how to efficiently use Unity Gaming Services packages in your game. The project is available to the public and meant to be used as an educational tool. The Use Cases Sample Project has an ever-growing list of samples. These samples are maintained and the team is always on the lookout for new use cases to add to the project. The samples can be utilized by all genres of games. As I mentioned before, this project is meant to be an educational tool so you and your team can learn the best ways to address your game's needs with Unity Gaming Services. I do recommend not copying and pasting these samples into your own game. These samples are designed to work efficiently in our project and may not be the most efficient setup for your game. Think of these samples as a stepping stone. I have mentioned Unity Gaming Services several times, so I'd like to go over what Unity Gaming Services, or UGS, is and what it has to offer. Unity Gaming Services is an end-to-end -end platform that is designed to help you build, manage, and grow your game. Unity Gaming Services has a suite of tools to help your team with multiplayer, backend, player engagement, and monetization solutions. Unity Gaming Services is getting ready to fully launch in June, but you can still sign up today and start trying out all of the solutions it has to offer. A link to the Unity Gaming Services website will be included on the YouTube page. Now let's go over how to set up the use cases sample project on your machine. First, I want to go over where you can find the sample package. Unity has created a GitHub page that is all the information I'll be going over in this presentation and the source code to run the sample package in your own editor. Another way to find the GitHub page is to click the Samples button in the Unity Gaming Services dashboard. Finally, you can do a web search for Unity Use Cases GitHub to find it through your preferred web browser. You do not need to make a GitHub account to gain access to the files. Once you reach the GitHub page, you'll want to clone or download the repository to save it on your machine. Once you have the file saved on your machine, you will want to open this project in your Unity editor. You will need version 2020.3 or later of the Unity editor to use the use cases sample project. Along with having the correct version of the editor, you will need to be aware of a few more requirements. If you are just running the use cases sample project from your Unity editor, you will not need to have a Unity Gaming Services account set up. All of the use cases will function properly and you can interact with them normally. If you move any of the use cases to another Unity project, then you will need to create a UGS account and link the project to the account. I have provided a link that goes over the sign-up process for Unity Gaming Services below. Now that we have everything downloaded, let's hop into the editor and check out some of the use cases. With the project open in your Unity editor, we can start looking at all of the samples. To view each sample in action, open the Start Here scene in the Asset Directory and hit Play. To review an individual sample, find the Use Case directory in the Assets section and view the README file for implementation details. Now let's take a look at some of the individual samples and talk about why you should check them out. The first use case I want to look at is the Seasonal Event. Seasonal events can increase game sessions and overall interest in a game as they give existing players new and fun content throughout the year to look forward to and can entice new players to begin playing. This sample shows you how to set up seasonal events based on fall, winter, spring, and summer for players in your game. It has a countdown indicating how much time is left in the current event, the currency rewards that can be won during the event, and a play challenge button that when clicked opens a pop-up where players can collect their rewards for winning the challenge. Clicking the collect rewards button in the pop-up will add the rewards to a player's wallet balance as seen in the currency HUD at the top of the screen. 
Once the countdown on the main screen hits zero, the scene will automatically change to the next event. When this scene first loads, it will initialize Unity services and sign the player in anonymously using authentication. Once Unity services completes initialization, we call the get server time function via cloud code so we can base game overrides and remote config data off the server time. Then remote config is queried to get the current values for the event related keys. These values allow for displaying the active event name, the potential reward for completing the event challenge, and the theme background image and play buttons. Remote config also tells us when the event ends, which is used in the countdown manager for determining and displaying how much time is left in the current event. When that time runs out, it triggers a new call to remote config to get the updated values for the next event. Additionally, analytics custom events are sent each time the scene loads, whenever a button is pressed, and when the back button in the scene is pressed, returning the player to the start here scene. The next use case we will focus on is the Battle Pass. A Battle Pass is a seasonal point-based reward system that is a popular and effective way to retain players in a game over time. Unlike a time-based reward system, there is an element of skill required to progress through the reward track. The Battle Pass adds another layer of appeal to the system while also adding a monetization mechanic by letting players purchase a second premium track with additional rewards. This sample uses currency as premium rewards though most games are designed to award cosmetic items at the premium level, or other items that do not give players a gameplay advantage. When the scene first loads, it will initialize Unity services and sign the player in anonymously using authentication. This can be seen in the Battle Pass Scene Manager script. Once Unity services completes initialization, we use a cloud code function to retrieve the configuration and state of the Battle Pass. The configuration that returns to us is based on the server's timestamp and the game override that's currently active. Reward tiers are stored as two JSON values in remote config. From our cloud code call, we also get a number of seconds until the season is over. With that, we can control our countdown view and eventually determine that it's time to query the server again for the next season's configs. Everything about the reward system and battle pass is powered by cloud code scripts from getting the progression, to claiming tiers, to purchasing a battle pass. Now let's take a look at the daily rewards use case. Daily rewards are a prevalent feature in live games. Whether it is presented in a weekly or monthly calendar, with or without completion streaks, daily rewards are presented in games across all genres to boost retention. This feature will present a calendar of daily rewards that generally increases in value over time to encourage players to return daily to claim them. Our implementation permits skipping days but rewards are always claimed subsequently. So if a day is missed, the same reward will be available the next day. Only once a particular day is claimed will a subsequent day's rewards be unlocked on the next day. This sample demonstrates how to utilize Unity services, retrieve and update current values from the economy service, call cloud code to retrieve the updated status, and claim each day's reward. This use case sample uses cloud save rather than remote config to store the event's start time. The normal implementation for daily rewards is to set the start epoch time on remote config so all players experience the rewards starting on the first day of the month. However, to permit testing, we save the value to cloud save so each user can experience the daily rewards calendar as if the month starts when the use case sample is first opened. And now let's move to rewarded ads. Rewarded ads offer players the opportunity to receive rewards in exchange for viewing an ad. These are a great way to improve monetization and offer players a useful reward. In this sample, we demonstrate offering players the opportunity to increase the rewards they can receive at the end of a level by watching a rewarded ad. We also added an additional feature to encourage interaction with the rewarded ad, a periodically appearing booster challenge where players can get up to a five times multiplier instead of a two times multiplier by clicking at just the right time. In this way, we gamify the rewarded ad, making it more fun and tempting for players to interact with. When the scene begins, we'll see a complete level button on the screen. When it is clicked, a pop-up will appear. This pop-up could display one of three scenarios, gamified rewarded ad option, standard rewarded ad option, or collect level and rewards only without an ad appearing. Along with rewarded ads, this sample also utilizes Unity Mediation, Unity Mediation allows publishers to monetize their app by providing access to quality 
expansive advertising demand that competes for the best impressions. Unity Mediation aims to save publishers time in managing ads, aligning pricing strategies with audience segments, optimizing ad revenue, growing revenue quickly, analyzing strategic performances, and having direct access to demand source and ad networks all from one SDK. Please note, Unity Mediation only supports iOS and Android, so if the project's build target is any platform other than these two, you will see a warning in the console at play mode initialization and at Unity Services initialization indicating the platform is unsupported. Finally, let's take a look at command batching. Command batching is the concept where each game action is a command, which can be collected into a queue to be sent to the server in batches for processing. Using command batching can optimize the bandwidth of your game to be as energy efficient as possible or to prevent your game from running slowly because of frequent server calls or server bottlenecks, aka rate limiting. This optimization provides users with a more pleasant game experience with less wait times by reducing the number and or frequency of server calls made by your game. This sample demonstrates a game where the player has a specific number of turns and commands are created and saved for each move the player makes on a turn. At the end of the game, all commands that were created are then processed by the server as a group. This strategy reduces how many server calls need to be made in a game. Imagine a game that distributes rewards on the server after every command, in particular rewarding a player XP by calling cloud save and coins by calling economy. You can see how in a full game, this could end up with a lot of server calls being made while the game is being played, potentially slowing the game. However, if all three of these commands are stored in a batch and processed at one time, it would result in just two Unity services calls. By making your game run as efficiently as possible, you will improve player experience and increase retention rates. While I haven't covered all the use cases available in this project, I've tried to cover some of the most useful for all dev teams, no matter their size or genre of game. I encourage you to take a look at the other use cases when you access the project. A final note is to remind everyone that this list of use cases will continue to grow. The team is always on the lookout for new use cases to add to the project and maintain the current list. Let me wrap up this presentation by again reiterating the value of this sample package and giving everyone more information on how to follow up about Unity and Unity Gaming Services. The use cases sample package can show developers of all sizes and skill levels how to properly use Unity Gaming Services to address common live game design elements. While these samples are not designed to be copy and pasted, they still give you a great starting point. Several links will be included with a YouTube page that will give you more information about Unity, Unity Gaming Services, GitHub, and information about the use case sample project. Here's all of my contact information. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me via email, LinkedIn, or Twitter. I will either answer your question directly or get you in contact with someone at Unity who can answer your questions. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation and keep an eye out for more Unity Gaming Services boot camps coming out later this year. Have a great day.